sportsatlanta.com. So, uh, so let me ask you this, Dr. Roberts. I, I was taking notes as you were talking uh, because uh, I know um, the importance of listening to uh, my older brothers. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to say elders because that sounds old. You're not an old man. Uh, you know, uh, but my my older brothers, the individuals that paved the way for people like me, yourself, Dr. Paul Anderson, and, and uh, Kenny Gamble, uh, Dr. George Frazier, others. Um, I pay attention, you know, uh, and uh, because I, I think that there's a wisdom there. And I want to ask you this question. I'd be curious to know your answer. I have, I have several thoughts that, that came to mind. But one thing is this. I noticed that, you know, you were born in 1948, if you don't mind me mentioning that. Um, and uh, that was before we had this uh, social phenomenon called integration. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I was born after integration. Uh, I saw a different kind of world than what you saw. On one hand, my parents had similar uh, common sense values like like yourself. Like my mother, uh, your your mother, I, I believe your mom became a teacher, uh, and she was also a homemaker. My mother was a, a guidance counselor, so it was just a lot like a teacher. And my dad was a um, a police officer, you know. So he also had that that steady job. But there was a, a value system in the household, a type of personal responsibility <clears throat> that uh, that we believe is made the difference. You know, we were born in the projects. But my sister's a physician. My brother went to Cornell. You know, I, I have a PhD. We all did. You know, we had a, we had different outcomes from a lot of our friends, uh, and a lot of it I attribute to the fact that uh, my parents had a value system that would be defined as conservative. And it almost seems like you know the, maybe the Republican Party has kind of hijacked things like personal responsibility. Uh, you know, but but I believe in that very deeply. I believe in those ideas, and it se- sounds like that's what your parents believed in too. Uh, can you speak to whether or not you believe that, you know, uh, the integration itself, just this idea that, you know, that, that somebody else's ice is colder, that it's better to get out of the hood and move across town. Uh, it's better to go work for uh, work for somebody else than it is to go build your own. Uh, you know, do you, can you speak to how this uh, has shifted our community and the odds of success uh, amongst our young people? Well, l- let me begin by saying that you know, it, w- it was once quoted that um, the person who does not enjoy the fruits of their labor is a slave, a modern day slave, if you will. Earlier, I mentioned the term golden cuff, uh, handcuffs. Uh, I was slowly and softly suggesting that perhaps having a job is a form of modern day slavery. Uh, You just don't enjoy the fruits of the labor. The family members of the companies that you're working for enjoy the fruits of your labor, but your family does not. And too frequently what I find is even my friends who are very successful with jobs continue to live paycheck to paycheck. I've written a book, Action Has No Season, Strategies and Secrets to Gaining Wealth and Authority. Uh, it's been out a number of years. Within the next 30 to 45 days, my second book is coming out and it's gonna be Action Has No Season 2.0. And in it, I discuss a variety of things, including one's mindset. And how is it that your mindset positions you to be limited uh, when in fact it's a state of mind. And how do you change that? How do you make that shift? Well, I coined the word the actionaire. Uh, the actionaire is one who takes their ideas, their dreams, their vision, their passion, and they pursue them with courage and confidence and bravado. I'm trying to get more people to accept the concept of being an actionaire. The core word is action. And too frequently, what we find is we have great ideas, we have dreams, we have all of these thoughts and plans, but, but we never take action behind it. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who are watching this right now who said, or have observed the fact that they had a great idea and a year or two later, somebody else had, took that idea and made billions of dollars with it. Did we cut off? There you are. Uh, I, uh, and so, I, I, put your, I wanted to put the image of your book up on the screen, but, um, but go, go ahead, brother. Okay. Sorry. 
No, 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 fine. Uh, so if, if we look at the, if we take on the perspective that action is, is natural to the human, your body is always in action, your heart is always beating, your brain is always thinking, everything about you is action-based. The question becomes, why is it when you get outside of that, you begin to back off of it and slow down and ignore the reality that you have some brilliant ideas that could become extremely successful. Now, when my brother and I built our companies, I mean, we've owned, I've built a wireless phone company. I was probably the only black that's ever built and owned a wireless company, took it public, and ultimately was rolled up and sold, uh, it was sold to Sprint. Uh, I did the same thing with a variety of the eight or 10, or about 12 TV stations that I own. Uh, at, at one point, some of them were sold for purposes of financing some of our other businesses. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a billionaire. I would just say that I built a company that had, according to CNN, that kind of value. Uh, so I, I, I love to, to clarify, you know, and be precise with who I am and what I am. Uh, but who I am is someone who is, who's taken the time to write the first book and the second book. Why? Because I believe that the strategies and secrets that I've learned to gaining wealth and authority is something that has to be shared. And the best way to share it long term is to write about it. You know, some people are asking, well, what's the difference between being, uh, being rich and being wealthy, for example? And I tell people all the time, well, this is my favorite phrase, rich people scream, but wealthy people whisper. 